Okay, so on page 197, question number 29, has four parts. All four of them want you to find the momentum of the objects. So A is a 0.25 kilogram baseball traveling at 46.1 meters per second east. So it's just P equals MV. So 0.25 kilograms times 46.1 meters per second. And when you do this, you get a momentum of 11.525 kilogram meters per second. Momentum is a vector. Always will have the same direction as the velocity. It was east. B. A 7.5 times 10 to the 6 kilogram train traveling west at 125 kilometers per hour. So again, P equals MV. So 7.5 times 10 to the 6 kilograms. And 125 kilometers per hour, you have to change to meters per second. So 1.125 uh, 1 kilometers per hour, and you're going to divide that by 3.6, okay, to get meters per second. So that'll be uh, dividing, so kilometers per hour on the top, meters per second on the bottom. So 7.5 times 10 to the 6 kilo, uh, kilograms. And when you switch that, it's, uh, oh, I don't even have it written down. 1, 2, 5. It's 34.72 with the two repeating meters per second. And so your momentum is 2.604 times 10 to the 8th kilogram meters per second. And it told us the train was going west, so the momentum is west. Okay? C says uh, 4 times 10 to the 5th kilogram jet is traveling 755 kilometers per hour. So P equals MV, 4 times 10 to the 5th kilograms, 755, when you switch it to meters per second, 209.7. I think it's probably 6 repeating, but I will double check that. No, 7 with the 2 repeating. Um, multiplied by 4 to the 5th gives you 830, I'm going to write it in scientific notation, 8.38, 8, and the 8 is repeating, times 10 to the 7th kilogram meters per second. And when we go back, it says that it was going south. And D says an electron, mass 9.11 traveling north, and no conversion necessary this time. So 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, and the electron is going 6.45 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And so when you do the math, you get 5.876 times 10 to the negative 24 kilogram meters per second. The electron dude was going north. So its momentum is north. All right, flip the page. And number 30. Number 30 is a sledgehammer that strikes a spike with an average force. So F is 2125 newtons down. Over a time interval, so delta T is 0 0.0205 seconds. And it wants you to calculate the impulse. So impulse, J, is just equal to F delta T. So 2125 newtons, 0 0.0205 seconds. And you will get a J of 43.56 newton seconds. And that will be down. The J and the F are always in the same direction. And remember, a newton second is the same as a kilogram meter per second. We just, in when it's impulse, we often leave it as newton second. Number 31, a crash in a crash test, a car strikes a wall with an average force, F, of 
times 10 to the 7th newtons, and it's going south. Over a time interval of 21 ms, and the ms is milliseconds. So that's 21 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds, or if you want, 0 0.021, okay, seconds. Calculate the impulse. So again, J equals F delta T. So J equals 1.23 times 10 to the 7th Newtons times 0 0.021 seconds. J is equal to... 258300 zero, zero, Newton seconds south. All right, so that's number 21, 31. Number 32 says, in a crash test similar to the one described in problem 31, another car with the same mass and velocity as the first experiences an impulse identical to the value you calculated. So the J in 32 is what we just found, the 258,000 300 newton seconds south, okay? However, the second car was designed to crumple more slowly than the first. As a result, the duration of the interaction is 57.1 milliseconds. So 57.1 milliseconds or 0 0.0571 seconds. And this time it wants you to find what force the car would experience. So J equals F delta T. So F is going to equal J over delta T. So you're going to take that 258,300 newton seconds, and you're going to divide it by the 0 0.071 seconds. And when you do, you get an F of 4.52 times 10 to the 6 newtons. OK, now this is still a pretty big force. But look at what it is compared to the one in part A and number, whatever question that was, 31. In 31, it was times 10 to the 7th. In 32, it's only times 10 to the 6th. This is like a third of that one. That's incredible when you think that the difference in the time is 0 0.036 of a second. So if you can make a car crash last, 0 0.036 of a second, you can actually decrease the force by almost a factor of three. And that is how people end up surviving car crashes because of a thing called crumple zones. Okay, and if you were working on uh, your physics of car crash essays before we got closed down, you probably found about crumple zones. So that either at the front end and the back end of the car, the the, um, the ends crumple, and what happens is it's making the delta T longer, so the F will be smaller. It's a wonderful thing. In the olden days, it used to be, let's save the car, and the people got killed. Now they save the people. All right, number 33 over on 203. The velocity of a serve of some professional tennis players has been clocked at 43 meters per second. Horizontally. Uh, it is stri the tennis dude strikes the racket. The mass of the ball is point, um, zero 0.06. So M is zero point zero 0.06 kilograms. And it wants to know what is the impulse. And I think um, it's, and we're going to assume this is the final. And it started, whoops, it started at zero. It's always good if it's not moving. So we know J is equal to F delta T, which is equal to M delta V. So in this case, we're using the M delta V. So 0 0.06 kilograms, v, delta V is VF, 43 meters per second, minus VI, which is zero. Do the math, and you get a J of 2.58 kilogram meters per second. Okay, and it didn't tell us any direction, so it's that, that's going to be in the direction of motion. 34 says a point zero. see if I can get this in, 3.5 kilogram ball. It's initially moving 46 meters per second, and then you hit it and it goes in the opposite direction, 62 meters per second. So this is opposite. And we're looking for J, which will be M delta V again. So 0 0.35 kilograms, but now you